There we go. We didn't overheat the board. We just removed that. Now let's remove the gyro. There we go. It's coming. There we go. We just got the MPU 6000 gyro. Do you see how easy it makes uh, salvaging? So now let's just go ahead and heat up the flight controller. There we go. Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at my all new favorite soldering station slash free workstation. I've been using this for the past two weeks and it is insane. I never knew how good one of these would actually be. And I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. So this is the Gordok 863 three in one digital repair combo. That's what they're calling it. It's a rework station. As you can tell here, it does come with a soldering iron. It takes the normal soldering iron tips here. They also do provide the holder and the sponge. And the soldering iron is removable as well as the hot air gun is completely removable, which is a huge plus here. And we also have silicone wires, which just glide around the table and they don't get tangled, which is something that I look for in a rework station. Now for the hot air gun here, it is using brushless motors on the inside and it does have uh, a tilt switch. If you hear that, that's not, it's, there's nothing broken. This is the tilt switch. So once you lift it up like this, it'll start cooling the, the heating element inside and uh, it'll just allow it to cool down. And once you place it back down, it'll start increasing the temperature. And the same thing goes once you place it down. That's It's, it's a little switch that has a little contact in there. So once you move the, the hot air gun just like this, the switch will go down and that means to power off the heating element and cool itself down. And if you even move back down, it pushes forward and it starts heating up again. So that's really nice. Now. So if you're holding it up like this, it'll start cooling itself down. Take that into consideration when purchasing it. I don't find it as a big issue, but some people uh, might just not like that and take that as a note here. Now, what is this huge top thing here? Now, this is a, I think a ceramic heating element here, which can, you know, you can put your PCBs here and lock them into place. And what that does is it heats up your PCB. Let's just say you can set it up to, I, I usually set it up to 200 centigrade if I have nothing on the bottom side. So what you do is you would actually set up a PCB that you're going to work on, allow the heating element, you can lock it into place really well, allow the heating element to heat up the board or preheat the board here. And once you do that, once you come in with your hot air gun, it just takes like half a second and then you just remove that component. So this is really good, especially for newcomers and newbies. And uh, actually even for myself, because sometimes I tend to overheat boards and it's something that I do and it's something that I still need to practice. And um, to have this heating element up top or the way that this is set up is, is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I'm also going to be showing you how to remove components and showing you the difference with this top heat preheating element and with just the hot air gun by itself. You're going to see a huge difference in speed and the overall uh, longevity of some of your components so you don't overheat and ruin the board. Now for the hot air gun, they do provide you with three heads. You have just, you know, just a couple of them, just the basic ones. You get these two and the one that's currently on there. And for soldering tips, they only provide you with one, just a little thin one, which I replaced to another one that I had laying around, but they only do provide you with one. This is everything you get. You also get the power cord. The power cord is kind of like the PC type power cord, uh, which goes in the back. It's not static, so it's completely removable. And that is something that is a huge plus for me. So I can just, you know, just pop it open, remove it. I don't have to dig around for the wire to actually pull it out. I can just pull from the back and move this thing to another place. Also, another thing that you might probably like also, let's just say you didn't like this hot air gun for some reason what you can do is remove both the soldering iron and the hot air gun and just use the use it as just a preheating element and you bring in your own gun or something of that nature uh, so you can do that as well here also the rework station or the hot air gun can be mounted either on this side or on the other side which I find to be very useful and very well thought out because all it takes is just two holes on the other side now for the mounting solution it's it's really good. However, you know, just I wish it would have just been like some kind of a locking mechanism, just like boop, that's it, locks. But you know, you have to twist these, and it's not that you know, it's not hard to twist them at all. But actually, I think it gets a better grip. And as you can tell here, uh, it, it it can hold the 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 board pretty well uh, if you set it up correctly here. And it has these little two notches here. If we zoom in here, we can actually take a look. It has these little notches which any PCB would just fit in. Bring them close together and tighten these little rods and you're good to go. What I was afraid of is this thing getting so hot while I'm trying to work over it that I might burn myself. But what I noticed, what's all, the only things that are getting hot 
is uh, obviously the, the, the preheating element here, and as well as these bars here. Now, I did have this running for 15 minutes. This pole didn't get hot, it just got warm. Uh, these stay cool, so I was able to rest my hand, because I need to rest my hand usually to get a stable... Um, a stable grip on some of the components here. I wish there was some sort of other, you know, like a, like a bar or like some kind of a plastic piece that wouldn't melt or something of that nature where I could rest my forearms because I usually need to rest my forearms if I'm doing something uh, very uh, precise so I can have better control over it. So that's one thing that I really didn't like, but the amount of effort that you have, to, that it takes to remove a component with this is absolute minimal. It's ridiculously crazy. No matter how much, no matter what experience you have, if you have zero experience, just like that, you'll remove any component without worrying about damaging any other component, which is really, really a huge plus in my opinion. And the reason why I say that is because we're gonna be salvaging components because I am obviously starting the open hardware flight controller. And um, what I wanna do is start salvaging some of the components. For example, we have a couple components that are pretty expensive. For example, the microcontroller units, the gyros, and as well as the uh, resonators, uh, they're, they're actually pretty, not, they're not that expensive, but they're pretty expensive for a, a open hardware flight controller. So you, you can grab those from anywhere, which is something really nice. Now let's talk about the interface here. All right, so now we're looking at the front interface and this is the only thing that's used to control this whole uh, rework station here. We have the main power here instead of the back, which is really nice to have up here. So you turn that on. Now th the whole module has obviously some power and we can turn on what we need. It's actually pretty intuitive. I didn't have to read any manuals to do that. So Sol obviously is going to be for soldering. Pre is going to be for the preheating. Rework is going to be for the hot air gun. Uh, as you can tell, soldering is on this side. But for my table, I had to put the rework station on this side. But again, I had to, the wire goes for the... Uh, rework station on this side so that's why uh, you, you might see it kind of flip like why is the rework there and not there it's because I put it on this side instead of that side all right so as you can tell here we do have the soldering set up here and it is in centigrade and it can go all the way up to I think 450 or 480 let's see oh it's going 500 degrees Celsius that's pretty insane so I'm gonna drop that down now I'm gonna keep it around 350 or yeah 350 is gonna be good all right, we'll just set that up for now. It heats up pretty quick, actually really nicely, so that's something a huge plus. Um, we also have the preheating element. Now, there's something here which I don't understand, so I guess you turn on the preheating element. Right now, it's set to 205, but it also has this heat button, and uh, I think it's not going to power up just yet until I press this, and I just want to see. I'm just going to wait a little bit. Yeah, I think that's what it was. So once we set up the second switch, yeah, we see that little dot right there. So now it'll start heating up. It can take up to like five minutes to get to 200 degrees. But once it does, it does. <laughs> it does get pretty toasty up there. So that's for the heating element. And the rework station is here. Uh, for the air knob, you can control it via a knob here, which I like controlling it this way. I like controlling the airflow through this knob a little bit better because I can just easily and quickly come to it while I'm, I'm working if I needed to drop it. Temperature is controlled via the buttons here. Very simple, very basic. And if you could tell, if was, once we remove it, it will actually start heating up. Actually, once we hold it down. Th this is the switching element that I was talking about. So now I'm holding it down, it's actually heating up. Now if I hold it up, as you can tell here, it starts decreasing the temperature. That is the tilt switch in there, and that is the, the, the thing you hear inside when it, when it, when it rattles. That, that's a tilt switch inside of the rework station right there, or the hot air gun, if we should say. So that's all set. And if you were to turn this off, it'll turn off no matter the temperature. There's some rework stations that when you turn it off, it'll stay on until it cools itself off and then it'll shut down by itself. But this one, if you power it off right here, it'll power itself off. But if you place it down, it'll cool itself down. So take that into consideration when using this. All right, so as you can tell, the, the, control, the control interface is very intuitive. There's really nothing to it. I didn't have to read any documentation at all whatsoever to use this. And it was pretty simple. All right guys, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test this. We're gonna try to remove this microcontroller unit with the preheating element and without the preheating element. So we're just gonna do one with just the hot air and then the other one's gonna be up top on the preheating element waiting for it, I mean, once it heats up and then bring in the hot air and just show you the difference in time and effort that it takes to remove a very complicated device for some people. So this is, um, and again, this is the best salvaging tool I have ever seen and uh, I think I'll ever find, to be honest, which is really nice. And it's only 150 bucks, which is crazy. All right, so let me prepare everything so we can start doing this test, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start the first test, which is going to be us removing the microcontroller unit 
with no preheating station. So let's go ahead and set this up. So meanwhile, that does that. What I do is, um, I found this amazing actually flux. It's a flux syringe. I get them from Banggood now. I used to buy flux locally, but um, I just never found a really good one. So check this out. This is really nice. It just comes pre-prepared here. And then uh, we're just gonna add a little bit of flux before removing this. Make things a little bit easier. As you can tell, here it is. It's a. Uh, it's really nice. I picked up like four of them. They've been lasting for a while, and I've actually been using them quite often. So yeah, they're really good. I don't think it's no clean flux, but um, it doesn't really. Yeah, it's a no clean flux. That's what it's stating. Anyways, so what I have to do now, like I mentioned, is I have to hold the uh, rework station downwards like this, so it can boot up and start heating up. And um, let's just see. It's at 300 degrees Celsius, and 340, and 360. On 370, there we go. All right, so now let's just see how long it takes for us to remove this. Let's just zoom in here for you. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna get a grip somewhere so it'll be easier. It's really difficult on camera because I'm a lot farther than I usually am. So just take note of the time and the amount of effort that it's going to take for me to remove this. It's taking some time because there's so many pins and it's so large here there we go there we go all right so I don't know how long that took but I'll check it on the camera and I'll have it set up on the video here so I'm gonna put the heating element back so we just removed our f4 microcontroller unit here and I'm just gonna stick this to the side and um, I probably overheated the board slightly here and this is the reason why I really like this this tool with the preheating element. So now we have this one. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare it. And actually, let's do that together. And then just clamp it. Now, when it's hot, you're not gonna be able to do this, or you will burn yourself. So it's still cool because I haven't booted it just yet. So we're gonna place it in. And uh, just be careful where your rework station is, if it was on before or not, because uh, what you can do is if you touch that, you're gonna burn yourself. So yeah, take that in consideration. I bought it as close as possible here for the camera. Uh, so that's why you're gonna see it this close currently. Okay, I'm bringing it in a little bit even closer here. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna turn on the preheating element and it's set to 210 degrees and now we're just gonna wait for it until uh, it heats up. All right, so right now currently it's at 112 degrees centigrade. Now we can watch the flux start to uh, melt a little bit and I'm just gonna wait for it a little bit more. It's preheating the board pretty well, I think. Have that heat up very nicely. I'm gonna remove the gyro on this and also the 16 megabit flash here because uh, I'm just uh, salvaging components and I also want the uh, resonator right there because these are pretty, ex well, I mean, they're pretty expensive for, you know, comparing it to the price of capacitor. And that's the reason why I'm salvaging these so I can uh, uh, go ahead and start building my open hardware flight controllers and all of these things once people start contributing. All right, so let me see how I'm gonna do this real quick. All right, so I'm really far away and um, yeah, just excuse me if I make mistakes. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the uh, 16 megabit flash here. There we go. We didn't overheat the board, we just removed that. Now let's remove the gyro. There we go, it's coming, there we go. We just got the MPU 6000 gyro. Do you see how easy it makes uh, salvaging? So now let's just go ahead and heat up the flight controller. There we go. Awesome, I'm also gonna take this one here. There we go. And I'm also gonna take the resonator. Just the resonator stuck to the uh, tweezers here. 
There we go. All right, and if you want to do, oh, the BAT 54C, which is the shot key diode right there, so I'll take that as well. Let's just take it. There we go. There's no USB on this one. There's 3.3 volt regulators and some capacitors, but you have to remove the capacitors and measure them one by one. There's also LEDs here. So it's, uh, it's, it's really nice to have this preheating element. I mean, it saves so much time, so much effort, and uh, you reduce the chances of, uh, of you overheating the board, especially if it has a lot of copper plating. It, gets, it tends to be a little bit harder to do that with just the uh, hot air alone. So right now I'm just gonna turn everything off here. And um, yeah, let's take a look at what we got. All right guys, so as you saw, it took less than one minute to salvage all these components without damaging anything, which is something that I, I never thought it would be really that useful. It's incredibly useful. So what did I salvage here? I salvaged the F4 microcontroller unit, the 16 megabyte of flash, and uh, also we salvaged the MPU 6000 gyro, shot key diode, and then a resonator with a fused capacitor to it, which we'll remove later on. This is an 8 megahertz resonator, which is uh, used on every flight controller, uh, which are a little bit sometimes expensive, especially if you're going to get a good branded one. So I'd just like to just salvage them now. And uh, a little switch here. So yeah, I'm, I'm also going to be doing a video into what to salvage and what you really don't need to salvage on a flight controller if you would be interested in that and how to test components if they are worthy of salvaging, if they're still functioning or not. So some things that are a must, just I'll tell you right now, is the resonator. The MPU 6000 gyro is actually quite expensive, believe it or not. And obviously the microcontroller units here, which is an F4. And uh, you can go ahead and salvage this eight, 16 megabits of flash, uh, especially for the open hardware flight controller. Soon I'll be incorporating it, since now I have a ton of them because of the flight controllers that I had laying around, which I'm salvaging. And I'll make a separate video for uh, my salvaging videos. As you can tell here, I've already started salvaging a couple things here, which is uh, really nice and uh, it'll reduce cost on me. And uh, it should be really fun to see what else we can do with these. So I'm really excited for this and it's, uh, it's really awesome. All right guys, so my final thoughts of the Gordak 863. I love it. I mean, it's just, it, it's cut down so much time for me and you know, reduces the chances of me ruining anything really. Uh, but I know for sure I'll probably end up burning myself once or twice on this. But um, I just have to be extra careful and uh, just keep in mind what how hot this thing can actually get to. Now, uh, for the heating element, it worked really great. It takes about five minutes, I think, or four minutes to fully heat up the heating element. And um, just give it a little bit of time. Ten minutes, you'll start working. You can set up a bunch of PCBs here. And then just, just in a row, take them out one by one, which is really nice. It just felt like I'm putting the hot air over it real quick. Boom, it pops out. If I waited a little bit longer, which I didn't, uh, usually I let it sit for a bit. And then when I, once I come in, just quickly touch it with the hot air, I can remove every single component just immediately without worrying about bumping in anything or um, removing anything else. So overall, like I said, I am in love here. I've been using it for the past two weeks and you're definitely gonna see this a lot more on the channel because uh, of the directions the channel is going into. So, so far it's been good. Obviously I'll release update videos and well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll leave a link to this down below if you can check that out. That'll great support the channel. And uh, I do have a Patreon. If you do like this content, please consider joining my Patreon. And till next time, peace out guys.